you pick the date or even have memory of when you started talking about, I want the All-Star game in Cincinnati? Oh, easily. It was the day of the first press conference when we bought the team. Uh, January 20th? Sure. 2006? Absolutely. You know, Cincinnati is, is, uh, is the home of baseball. We, we, should have had, had the, we should have had this probably by that time. There were 30 teams, and it was uh, since 1988. So that was 18 years, and a lot of teams had uh, changed venues and, and uh, either cities or stadiums or whatever. And uh, usually the, the rule of thumb was that you got, you got it pretty soon after you, you had uh, gotten into new, a new stadium. So we were four years a- after that, and we still hadn't gotten it. So Why? Uh, I don't know, Brad. Uh, there are a lot of different things that uh, that a commissioner uh, considers before he gives gives a nod to a city, and uh, I, I, I I have a difficult time trying to get into that rationale. So I won't make you go 20 minutes on trying to figure it out. But do you remember the <laughs> turning point on the conversation with Bud Selig when um, he said, "All right, we'll do it." Yeah, I remember Bud's telling me that uh, I think it was about in 2000. Uh, 12, he said, before I retire, you, uh, I will make sure you get an all-star game. And so that, you know, that sort of got me off his back. And uh, Bud and I had a good relationship, and, and uh, he just kind of looked at me like, I'm promising you this, so please, I don't need to be... Stop talking about it. Yeah, yeah. And 2015 becomes the date. When the announcement comes and you get the all-star game, your feeling is what? When the announcement said it's coming to Cincinnati. Well, we were ecstatic about it. And, uh, you know, there are a lot of feelings that go into it. We're the oldest uh, franchise in baseball. Uh, baseball to Cincinnati is like motherhood and apple pie. Uh, we'd uh, shown such a great uh, uh, capability of handling a large uh, uh, aggregation of, of baseball fans during our two civil rights uh, games. They, we really set the, the tone for, for the rest of, uh, of uh, Major League Baseball. And uh, we, we just knew we could perform. So why is it so important to this city to have this game? Well, first of all, we're very proud of our city. And, uh, <laughs> you know, we, we're going to go out to 220 countries and uh, uh, to be able to show them what a wonderful place this is to live, work, and play. And uh, uh, when, when you can appeal to, to uh, most of the globe as a, as a city that, that entertains uh, uh, large and small corporations to bring their employees here, and what a wonderful place it is to raise a family. Uh, it's probably one of the most wholesome places in our country. And it's uh, not too large and not too small. We can say all these things, and if we don't say them, we can render them with everything that we're doing. Uh, it, it has a really a, a, a wonderful impact on, on what, what can happen for our city in the future. Is it much more important then for this city than it is for you as an owner of this team? More important for the city or more important for the team? Well, I think the two go hand in glove. Look. When you have something like this in New York or L.A. or Chicago, there are two or, th- two or three competing venues. I mean, those are big cities. They have a lot of things going. When we have this, or when Kansas City or Pittsburgh or Minnesota, the, the Twins of Minneapolis or St. Louis has this, it is all-encompassing. It is a wonderful uh, way to show, uh, to show place your city. And it's, it is the only thing that's happening at that time. You're watching the preparations. Right. Are you pleased with what's going on? Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Because of the amount of people that are involved? Because I know that was one of your mentions on how many volunteers, how many people will be involved in preparing the city. Mm-hmm. And have you seen a difference, or is this, ah, uh, this is my Cincinnati when you watch the preparations of the people that are involved? No, I think it's it goes above and beyond what we've ever done here as, as a community to show place our, our city. Um, you know, the, 
the mustaches all over the city and uh, the 1869 uh, first red leg uh, on our, our huge uh, buildings. Uh, this um, absolutely. You would go on the zip line. I might if I'm if I'm uh, if I'm offered uh, an opportunity. Yeah, I might do that. Who would not offer you an opportunity to zip line? It's My son might want to keep me alive. Yeah, it's safe. I've zip lined. It's Have fantastic. You? Let me highly recommend it. Thank you for that recommendation. Then, then I can say to our public, you, you can will say take exactly what I just said that there might there's a possibility that it could happen, and there's a possibility it might not. happen. Well, I didn't say that either. I said there's a possibility that it could happen. You, you don't want to be putting words in my <laughs> mouth, Brad. Come on. All right, let's talk about other possibilities. Um, we know Pete Rose is going to be here. He'll work with Fox. Uh, Pete's already decided that he's made his own announcement that he's going to be one of the franchise four. Uh, so I know that's not an announcement that's not coming officially until July 14th, but Pete says he'll be here. He'll be on the field. It was one of your things when the All-Star game came that you said it was important that Pete be involved if he didn't make that franchise four or he wasn't part of Fox. What was your desire to have Pete involved in this All-Star game and why would it be important to you? Well, Pete's one of the great players we've ever had, uh, uh, not just in our time, but, but for all 130-some-odd years. And uh, he's still alive. He's still uh, healthy and, and uh, just full of uh, baseball stories and folklore, and he watches the Reds every night, and, and Pete continues to be a great part of our, our franchise and, and our baseball legacy. And he's homegrown. He's from Western Hills, and by golly, proud of it. There was hope, obviously, that there might be an announcement, because everybody likes to create whatever story they're going to create. Pete's going to show up, and the new commissioner is going to say, I have reinstated Pete back into baseball. Was that ever part of the talk that you were involved in? No, I've never heard that conversation. And did any of the new reports of Pete betting on baseball as a player prickle you or make you decide, uh, you know what, I need to change my mind. We don't need this kind of negative coming out in our all-star game. Look, I've always felt that Pete Rose should be reinstated in the baseball, and I still feel that way. And in the Hall of Fame. And in the Hall of Fame, which, uh, you know, reinstatement comes first. And uh, Pete is is a, is a much a part of baseball in my life than anybody uh, else I could think of. Do you think that will happen? That he will ever get reinstated into baseball? I I, I don't know. I I I I really don't know. Certainly, there are a lot of people like me that that feel he should. Have you had conversations with the new commissioner to that effect? Absolutely. Absolutely. And do you believe this new commissioner is open to that? Absolutely. He's going to try to do the right thing by baseball, and and by, by what he feels is is proper at this time. But I, I don't I don't have a crystal ball. I'll, I'll I'll be very frank about that. Your team's performance isn't what you'd like coming into the All Star break, unless they would get a chance to play the Washington Nationals every every day of the year. Apparently, they like that team. Um, is it a struggle as an owner? I mean, it is what it is as an owner. Your team performs the way it does. You don't have a crystal ball. You can't uh, affect every outcome. That's pretty easy game. to answer to you, with somebody like you. You're a professional. When you have a good interview and, and you see it at 11 o'clock, you go to bed at night and you say, I had a good day. When we have a good uh, baseball game like we did last night and the night before, I've had a good day. And all of us involved with the franchise have had a good day. Does it... Impact hosting, the way your team is playing, how, how does that impact? Our fans have been fantastic. They support our team. They love our players. They love the fan experience here at the ballpark. And uh, there are two ways that you give fans satisfaction. The things that happen in the stands and the things that happen on the field. And we, when we don't produce on the field, we're losing 50% of what we should be doing. And our players know that. They're proud people. Uh, we've had a tough time. We've had a lot of injuries. But uh, they'll not stop playing every night. 
So you have to make decisions. And as you say, your players know that. Johnny Cueto could not have pitched much better than he did last night. He couldn't have. He was terrific. And he's sitting at the top of the list yeah. of this guy may go. Mm -hmm. What do you foresee? Will Johnny Cueto be a member of the Reds? I don't have a crystal ball. We, we have to make sure that we can live within our means, and we have to make sure we can always, uh, we're always looking out for what's going to be good for this franchise long term. But it would break our hearts if, if Johnny wasn't uh, with us. And yet uh, uh, economic reality might dictate that. But I don't have a crystal ball there either. There are going to be plenty of suitors for Johnny Cueto. Sure. Araldus Chapman. Sure. Um, there may be several other names on, on the list. Mike Leak. Who knows how many? Uh, because you're a businessman and you look towards the future, is everybody open at this point? Well, first of all, I'm not going to agree with all those names that you named. Okay. And secondly, uh, uh, I, I, I wouldn't envision, uh, uh, first of all, I don't envision anything. But secondly, uh, anything that we would have to do would be, be a tie in between economics and what kind of players we would get for the players that we would have to give up. And so uh, I, I, don't have, uh, I, I don't have a prediction nor a crystal ball. I want to talk a little bit about uh, around here. Um, you've been on the Joint Bank Steering Committee. Um, you talk about how proud you are of this city. Uh, what's happened around this ballpark and how much of this ballpark and what's come to this field has to do with the revitalization of, of what's going on at the banks and over the Rhine and around this downtown? Well, our citizens uh, of Hamilton County were we're far-seeing enough to say we need our ballparks. If we're going to keep these major league franchises, we need them down on the riverfront uh, for ingress, egress reasons, as well as for what's good for the city and the county uh, before and after games. And uh, they passed that levy, and, and that was back in, what, 1999 or 98. And uh, it was far-seeing, and it was really, uh, it was a great, um, boost for, for our sports franchises because our citizens were telling us that they, they needed us here and they really relished us being here and they appreciated us, uh, us being here. So there we have the two stadiums and a great big dust bowl in between. And uh, look, you know, the, the riverfront is the front door of our, our city. It, it's the living room of our city. And uh, the city and the county uh, elected officials and staffs got together and with, with some uh, uh, cooperation with, uh, with the private sector and made it happen. And now it's going from the riverfront uh, eventually uh, up, up to uh, uptown where our hospitals and UC and the zoo is and, and it'll be a wonderful tie-in to, to let everybody know what a wonderful place this is. You proud of that? Absolutely. What's the state of baseball? And a small market team like Cincinnati being able to compete in what baseball is doing right now? Yeah, I, I've heard people try to understand what a small market is, so I'll make it real easy. It's the number of eyeballs that you have watching your television. Uh, your, your attendance uh, capabilities uh, are, are, are uh, different between the, 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 the geography. You know, if part of your market and attendance is 200 miles away, you have less of a tendency to, to have those people come uh, for 81 games than you do if it's New York with 11 million people within 35 miles. So it's more of the television uh, uh, capability, and we are the smallest television market in the country. Now, that having been said, we're not going to co constantly whine about being a small market uh, uh, team. We, we knew what we were getting into, and I've been involved in, in baseball for a long, long time. And we feel like we've, we've done pretty well, uh, but we've got a long way to go. And uh, when we have the kind of season that we've had this season so far, and I'm not saying we're going to continue to have this, this uh, under 500 uh, performance for the rest of the, uh, the season, but you, you take a look at yourselves and you say, we've got to make things happen here. And uh, with the cooperation of our, our, our business uh, side and our, our general manager and 
president of baseball operations and his staff and, and our manager and his staff and, and uh, our ownership uh, combined, we, we, will, we will do whatever it takes to continue to try to stay on a winning, uh, on a winning uh, track, which, which we've, we feel like we've done a pretty good job. We've been in the playoffs, uh, what, three out of the last five years, and uh, we, we, we're not going to let that, uh, that impetus uh, slide. We're going to keep after it. You okay with where baseball is in general? Uh, I just told, told you I'm not, not going to bring out the crying towel. Everybody knows that that uh, small market teams do not have an advantage in baseball, and that uh, football certainly has the right formula, and they share their their all their television uh, with their 32 teams. We don't do that. We we have uh, regional uh, networks, but. Every region has a different uh, 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 marketing capability and, and different uh, amount of eyeballs, as I explained earlier. So some things need to be fixed. Uh, look, uh, when you're on the outside looking in, that's the way you'd feel about it. But I'm not going to sit here and complain about our plight. We'll do the best we can with what we have. Should the all-star winner... Have home field advantage? Absolutely. Makes, makes it wor the game worthwhile. You bet. And those that question against it saying, why should this league get the win when my team won 102 games and should have it? Well, I would just say to you that if, if that, that's their outlook, then maybe they have to say to themselves, sometimes life isn't fair. It is a very, very good thing that the commissioner did to make this worthwhile. And you don't see that changing? No. The majority of the baseball minds feel that same way. Because uh, it has made the all-star game more relevant? Yes. Absolutely. And, and that was important? Yes. When this is all done, you would like to say what? about what the Cincinnati Reds and Cincinnati has presented in the 2015 All-Star Game? Well, I, I think, I, I mean, I re really feel like people are going to look back and say, boy, that is one whale of a baseball city and one whale of a city. That, that would be the ultimate. You're fairly convinced that will be said. Really feel that way. Really feel that way. Thank you.